Hey guys, welcome back to a super relaxed tutorial. Today we're gonna to be going over a process that um, is just gonna be completely from scratch. I'm just gonna create a product that has never existed and show you guys how I create things completely from scratch, just right off the bat, just with built-in Blender add-ons, things like that. We'll probably be using the Bull Tool, we'll be using some HDRI, environment textures, things like that, some special lighting tricks, um, and just a few little simple tips and tricks that I normally use on like a daily basis. Let's go ahead and hop into it. So I have my default file here. I'm just going to start off by just deleting this light and I'm just going to add an, an environment texture just so that, uh, and again, these are all free available on Polyhaven. I really like this one. It's just something about it that I love. Um, it has some really nice dynamic window lighting in here. Now we're in Eevee. I'm going to switch over to Cycles GPU. I'm going to go ahead and save the project. I'm just going to add in a nice floor plane here. S10, just scaled up by 10. G, Z to bring it down on the Z axis and I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to go over to this side right here, E, Z, which is going to snap it to the Z. Okay, and now I'm going to highlight this, control B to bevel and I'm going to scroll and when you scroll you can add these subdivisions here. So I'm just going to scroll like that. That looks perfect. Tab out of edit mode, right click, shade auto smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and take my camera and I'm gonna zero every value out. And then I'm gonna bring it back on the Y axis and I'm gonna tilt it up by 90 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and snap to my camera with numpad zero. And let's just go ahead and see where we're at. As you guys can see, we have our cube right here and we have our, uh, our like floor plane kind of canvas that we set up here. So this is gonna be like our product right here. So we're nice and zoomed in here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my camera again and I'm actually going to set up uh, Instagram dimensions, so 1080 by 1920. Um, and I'm just gonna give this like a nice, like a new color. I'm just gonna give it like a nice blue color so we can kind of see what we're looking at here. So now we kind of have our stage set up. Now, if you guys wanted to, you could add more lighting to this. For now, I'm gonna focus purely on the design. Um, and then I'm gonna show you guys like a few different tips and tricks we can go over on how to actually get some like cool lighting effects. But for now, I'm gonna hop into solid view and I'm gonna design something from scratch that I think looks cool, that has a lot of different things going on with it. We're gonna use a few different modifiers and things like that. Um, and I think what I wanna go for is just something like thin, kind of like an iPod size. So I'm just gonna click on our cube, S, Y to kind of scale it down, S, Z to kind of scale it up. And I kind of like what we have going on right here. So I think this general dimension is like pretty much perfect. I'm also gonna go ahead and drop this little drop down right here and I'm gonna click on random, and that's gonna allow us to differentiate between all of our objects, just makes it a little bit easier for us in the long run. Um, I am also li live streaming this, so if you guys see me moving the camera, um, you know why. So yeah, we have our cube here, and now I kinda wanna just go ahead and apply the scale. So object, apply, scale, okay? And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over to our bevel modifier, go ahead and add that in, and then I'm gonna just make that like really, really thin here something like that maybe it would look good and then just give that maybe even thinner something like that is perfect shade that auto smooth and this is already starting to look really really nice just a nice beveled cube um, and I think I want to add some different things into this so I'm gonna go ahead and click on add mesh cube okay now this cube looks fantastic I'm gonna just move it like right here now what I would like to do is kind of cut into the sides of this thing now to do that, we could use a Boolean modifier, but before we cut in, I actually wanna give this thing slight bevel too. I'm actually gonna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna select both of these edges here. So I have them both selected and then control B. And then I'm gonna scroll out because I want less divisions. I actually want one like that. I think that's perfect. I'm gonna tab out of edit mode, S, Z, scale that a little bit, S, X. Now what I would like to do is go to my side view and kind of see where we're gonna cut this out. Now at the moment, it's not zeroed out. So I'm gonna zero this out. I'm also gonna zero out my regular shape. And the reason I'm gonna do this, I'm also gonna bring my floor plane down, is because I want everything to be perfectly aligned. Because I want to make sure that when I add this symmetry and these mirror modifiers that everything's perfectly aligned. Now right now, this isn't cutting into anything, but before we cut in, I'm gonna go ahead and add a modifier. I'm gonna add a mirror modifier and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna target this cube, okay? And now it's gonna go ahead and flip on that direction. Make sure you're using the X direction. And now what I would like to do is actually cut this shape out of our original cube. So with this selected, I'm gonna shift click our cube, control shift B, I'm gonna click on difference. And as you guys can see, we have now cut into our cube and it's looking really, really nice. Now we should be able to reorganize this Boolean 
right above. So if we if we actually take that Boolean and move it above the bevel, notice how the bevel now applies to everything else as well. So that's just a really quick way to kind of like get that nice beveled shape. Now, I think I kind of want to do the same thing to the top. So I'm actually going to add a mesh cube in here, bring it up, scale it down a little bit, tab into edit mode. And I think this time I'll probably bevel these just a little bit less. So I'm going to select this edge right here and this edge, control B, just kind of bevel it a little bit. That looks good. Confirm that tab out of edit mode. I'm going to go to my side mode again, bring this down. I'm going to scale it up a little bit actually. I'm also going to go to object apply scale. Now, as you guys can see, if we cut into this, this should look pretty cool, but I actually want this to be more towards the edges. So I want it to be like barely towards the edges here. That looks pretty nice. Um, I'm going to also add a mirror modifier to this. So go ahead and click on your mirror modifier and I'm going to apply uh, use our cube as the base. Now you're gonna see nothing happens and that's because we need to switch this to Z. Now as you guys can see it's kinda gonna cut in from the top and the bottom there. I'm actually gonna hide this plane for now until we come back. I'm gonna go ahead and click on our object here. Shift click this. Control Shift B. Click on difference. And as you guys can see we now have another cut into our shape. Now you'll notice the bevels not there and that's because we need to move our boolean above our beveled object or our beveled modifier. And again, you can shade this auto smooth. It looks pretty good. Now I would suggest maybe adding some more segments. That looks pretty nice. Cool. So everything's looking pretty good so far. Again, we're kind of just cutting into this thing to build our, our product here. And again, this is just kind of a product that I'm making up on the fly as we go. I think I kind of want to have some buttons on the side. Let's go ahead and add some buttons. I'm going to go ahead and click on add mesh cube. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move this on the X and I'm going to switch to my X view, scale it down, scale it up. And as you guys can see, it's sitting way out here. I'm going to move it towards the surface here. And I'm going to press the period key to kind of zoom in on that. I'm going to scale it just a little bit more, move it along our X. That looks perfect. And then I'm going to scale it on the Y. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at my side view again. And I'm just going to keep scaling it on the Y until I'm pretty happy with kind of where it's at. I think that's perfect. And I just want to make it a little bit thinner, actually. That looks pretty good. And now before we do anything else, I'm actually going to go ahead to Object Apply Scale because I'm going to add a bevel to this. Now, we could add the bevel to everything or we could just add it to the sides. What if we just added it to the sides here? So let me go ahead to our Edge Select, select this edge this edge, this edge, and this bottom edge. Oops, sorry, did I select that properly? One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna do Control B. I'm just gonna bevel that just a little bit. That looks pretty good. And I, I think that looks nice. And that's just pretty much what I wanted to do for that. Again, we're just gonna bring it really close to the edge there. And now we just have a really nice button. Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and duplicate this, Shift D, and then if you press Z, it's going to snap to our z-axis. Now I can bring it down right here and we can scale it down some more. Now you notice when I scale it down, notice how the bevel gets messed up. Be careful when you guys do this. So I'm actually not going to scale it down. I think I'm going to keep this button just the way it is. And then what I might do is I might actually cut into this button. So before I do anything else, I'm going to delete that one. Add a mesh cube. I'm going to scale it down, move it over here, and I'm going to move it up. Go to my side view here, SZ. Now I'm going to use this to actually cut into our object. Okay. Make it nice and thin. And I'm going to actually give this an array modifier. And instead of our X axis, I'm going to do like negative 1.2. Bring it down here. And I'm going to go to my side view. And let's go ahead and give this a large count. That looks fine. Bring it down just a little bit. Now we're going to use this to cut into our button to make it have this nice ridge, ridged effect. Um, I think we should just be able to cut right into it. Let's go ahead and try that with the bull tool. And as you guys can see, we have this nice cutout right here. That looks pretty good. I might apply that and then add a bevel. So let's just say we wanted to apply that. We go ahead and click on apply. If we add a bevel to this, notice how it kind of starts to get a little distorted. But if you just slightly decrease the bevel. 
and increase those segments, you kind of get this nice ridged effect. And I actually think that looks really good. So I'm going to shade that smooth. We're going to go with that. Now, what's really cool about this is we can actually reuse this anywhere we want. Now, what would be really cool is if we also cut into right behind it. So let's just say we wanted to do add mesh cube, right? Scale that down, move it out on the X. I'm just going to move it up, scale it in a little bit. And I'm basically just going to outline the shape here. That looks good. I'm going to move it on the X. Now I'm going to try my best to line it up on the top and bottom and we can adjust this as we go. But basically I'm going to now cut into this shape. So I'm going to click on this cube and cut into my main product shape like that. And it's going to be kind of hard to see, but if you look really closely, it is there. Now with this selected again, guys, we can, we should be able to add a bevel and also make sure you go ahead and apply that scale. And as you can see, it completely disappeared. And the reason why, let me go ahead and get rid of that. The reason why is because of the order. Again, guys, let me go ahead and collapse all these. Our bevel should come after our Boolean. And as you guys can see, we now have this nice cutout here. Now the actual shape itself, this one, should be able to still scale that down. And I actually want to push this in more. So it's almost inside of that groove. That looks pretty good. And then we can take our hidden object here, scale it on the Y, and we're kind of just outlining this general shape. Make sure you try to make it as even as possible. That looks pretty good. Now we have this li nice little inset shape, guys, with our actual ridged kind of like button or whatever you guys might want to call that. Now, I, I think I want to add some other buttons as well on the side here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a cylinder, add mesh cylinder. I'm going to begin by just rotating that on the Y axis, 90 degrees. I am going to scale it down. That looks like a pretty good size and I'm going to move it out. Now I'm going to go to my side view here and just kind of gen generally place it. Cool. Now, if we go ahead to our side view again and we zoom in, you guys can see that it's sitting right there in the middle. It looks pretty good. I'm going to actually go to object, apply, scale, okay? And I'm going to add a few modifiers here. I'm going to save this as we go. Add modifier, bevel. All right, now you're going to see it's really intense. I'm actually going to reduce that a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to just give it a couple of segments and I'm going to shade it smooth. Maybe a couple more segments. That looks pretty good. Now, remember when you shade smooth, if you don't give it enough segments, it's going to look really weird. Now for a second, I'm going to disable this on the viewport. I'm going to actually add an edge split, which is right here. And then I'm going to add a subdivision surface. For the subdivision, I'm just going to use two and I'm going to enable our, um, our bevel again. Now remember, anytime you adjust the scale, which I'm doing right now, go ahead and click on object, apply scale, and then go ahead and move this back till it's barely touching the surface there. And you can really zoom in here to get it perfect. Now. Again, guys, we can do a little cutout here. Now, I'm probably going to do this. I'm going to collapse these modifiers. I'm going to add an array modifier. And I'm going to make this like a negative direction. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit further down. Now, what's really cool about this, guys, is I'm actually going to duplicate this, right? I'm just going to move it out on the X. I'm going to apply all of these modifiers. Okay, and I'm actually going to tab into edit mode, separate these by loose parts, and then I'm going to right click, set origin to geometry, and then I'm going to bring these over here like that, and I'm going to scale them both up, and then I'm just going to bring this one down. We only need one, sorry guys, I apologize. Bring this one down. Now this is now going to cut into our shape here. But before we do that, click on array. Go ahead and reduce that number there. Make sure this is lined up the best that you possibly can. That looks good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually use this to cut into our shape to kind of create another like notch kind of groove. So with this selected, shift click our original object. Use our Boolean difference. And as you guys can see, that worked fine. Now again, guys, we're going to have to make our bevel go after that shape there. Perfect. And we're going to move these in. And that looks really nice. Now look how easy that was to just kind of cut into our shape there, just kind of create that product. 
I just think that looks really, really nice and clean, and I'm really, really happy with the results so far. And again, we've barely done anything. We're really just using booleans here and basic primitive shapes. Now, how do we make this thing kind of even cooler, guys? Like, what else can we really do here? I kind of want to create something at the top here that cuts through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something that could have like a carabiner kind of attached to it. So I'm going to add a mesh. I'm going to add a cylinder. I'm going to rotate it on our X90. Scale it up. Or scale it down, sorry, S, Y to scale it across. And we're going to use this to kind of cut through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an array. I'm going to go to my side view, scale this down. And I think I want there to be five of these. One, two, three, four, five. That's good. I'll just roughly center them the best that I possibly can. I think that looks great. Again, we can come back to this later if we need to. Just make sure they're reaching on both sides there. Doesn't have to be perfect object apply scale as usual and then you're going to shift click our original product and we're going to try to cut into that and then what we're going to do is we're going to move our bevel beyond that that looks fantastic and then i actually want to go back to our hidden object here and i just want to go ahead and shade that smooth and as you can see it just makes those corners nice and smooth now if you wanted to you could add an edge split so what i could do here is just add an edge split and a subdiv surface uh edge split We'll bring that above the array and then a subdivision surface. We'll also bring that right here. And as you can see, that just smooths everything out really nicely. And what's really cool about this, this product now is we have these like loophole things that we can actually take and uh, loop other things through. So it just looks really nice. Um, and now I'm also thinking now that I'm looking at this, what if we also had something right here where you could kind of attach like one more loop? So maybe like a slight cut into our object. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to actually add a torus, okay? And I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to reduce our radius, make it nice and thin. That looks perfect. And then I'm going to rotate it like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it right here, scale it down. Now, what I want this to do is actually just cut right through, kind of like it's doing right now. That looks perfect. Um, I'm going to just shade this smooth. I'm actually going to give this a subdiv. That looks fine. And again, click on this, shift click. Let's do our Boolean operation. And as we can see, it's looking really nice. We can kind of see right through that hole now. Um, and then again, guys, bevel. Make sure that bevel is enabled. Cool. Looking fantastic. Now, this is going to start to get really complicated as you add more. You can see that kind of messed with the geometry a little bit. So just be careful, um, let me go ahead and check that. Sometimes you can click on fast for the solver instead of exact and that'll, that'll kind of help solve that a little bit. But so far I'm just loving the way that this thing is looking. And I think what I wanna do is have some insets on the inside too, maybe for a screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a cube, S, Y, scale it in, G, Y to bring it out, scale it down, go to our side view here, that looks good. S, Z to kind of scale that up. Now this right here, I'm gonna to want to cut into our shape. Oops, G, Y, that looks good. Okay, so now see how it's like slightly inside there. We're actually gonna cut right into our shape here. So I'm gonna click on this. Um, and then I think what I'm gonna do before anything else is I'm gonna select all of these edges here and give them a bevel, Control B. Something like that looks really nice. Tab out of edit mode. And then again, we're gonna use our Boolean operation. Shift click, Control Shift B, difference. And as you guys can see, it is right there. And we're gonna move it above our bevel and we should have a nice little cutout. Now guys, remember if you want to, you can add a mirror modifier. Mirror, and then you wanna click on Y. And for our object, we wanna click on our original cube. Now it's going to cut into both sides here. And this is looking really, really nice so far. I'm very happy with how this is looking so far. Now, I just noticed that this object is actually cutting into our, um, our cylinder here. So I'm actually going to go to my side view, move it up. Now it's no longer cutting. We are good to go. Cool. Just something to keep in mind. And I think that might have been what was causing those weird geometry issues. Sometimes when you have overlapping booleans, you can get some really intense issues um, that you definitely don't want. All right, let's go ahead and click on this. Um, I could do a mirror, 
mirror modifier on this. You can basically make this thing entirely symmetrical, but I think on this side, I want to have two thinner buttons. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those. Um, I'm going to scale this way, way, way down, bring it out on the X, go to my side view, scale it down, bring it up. And I'm going to go ahead and just push this up against the surface here. Cool. Scale that down a little bit more. And I'm going to give myself a little array modifier. Just like that. <clears throat> that looks fantastic. And I'm going to make these a little bit thinner. Cool. Object apply scale. Make sure you add a little bevel to that. Put that right there. That looks pretty good. Shade smooth. Bring this over to the X. Now, in this case, instead of cutting out for both of these, I actually want to cut out a giant shape behind them. So I'm going to add in a cube, scale it on the X, scale it on the Y, bring it out on the X, snap to this view, scale it in, scale it up. And then we're going to use this to kind of punch out that shape as usual with our Boolean. All right, so with this selected, I'm going to go ahead and bevel all the corners. Oops, actually, I'm going to object apply scale first, then bevel all the corners. Perfect. And then click on this. And let's go ahead and do our difference operation. As you guys can see, it's looking fantastic. Again, rearrange our booleans here. And if you want to, you can click on our hidden object again. And you can add a subdivision surface, which is going to kind of give you that nice curved look. Doesn't look terrible. I kind of like that, actually. And you guys, you don't have to do that. Um, I just kind of choose to do that. Let's see, shade auto smooth, because I think it looks nice. I'm going to bring these buttons in on the X. That looks good. Yeah, these, this is looking fantastic. We have a couple of buttons on this side for our fake product. And then we have a few on this side. Now, again, guys, this might not be the way you would design it, but I do think this is starting to look really cool. Now, I think what I might do is tab into edit mode. Remember, this is all coming from one cube. And I think I'm going to select um, these specific sharp edges. Sorry, I don't know. You guys don't know where I'm pointing. Right here and here on both sides. And possibly just see what happens if I was to just bevel all these. Very nervous to see how this is going to work, but let's just go ahead and see. So just bevel all those, tab back out of edit mode. Now look what we have. Whoa, I actually kind of like it. I kind of like how that turned out. It's got those nice, harsh edges. It just looks really good. So again, guys, you don't have to do that. That's just what I chose to do, and I actually think it looks really, really nice. Very awesome. So we have this really cool looking thing already with like pretty much minimal effort. Um, we have a couple of buttons on both sides, a little like switch thing, whatever that would be. Um, I can only think to maybe add an antenna to this. It's starting to look kind of like a walkie talkie or something. So I think I'm going to add an antenna. And then after that, maybe we can start to get into some shading stuff. Let's go ahead and add a cylinder in, bring that up, scale it in, bring it down, scale it in some more. And I'm going to bring it over on the X, kind of place it right there. That looks pretty good. Um, and I'm going to add the usual bevel, uh, edge split, and our subdiv. Cool. Right click, shade auto smooth, object, apply scale. And then we just have to adjust this bevel. That looks good. Go to our side view here, zoom on in, bring that up. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and shift D to duplicate, bring it up. S, S, Z. Object apply scale. And then I'm going to make my long part for my antenna in just a moment. All right, again, we're just kind of duplicating this thing and we're going to make this a nice long antenna here. Again, make sure you're applying that scale as you're going. This is looking fantastic. As you guys can see, we're starting to have some kind of like an antenna here. And I think for the top, what we might do is just do like a sphere or something like that. Oops, that's an icosphere. And actually, we're gonna do a round cube, add a round cube one shade auto smooth, bring it up, scale it down. 
scale it way down. I'm not sure if I like that actually. Instead, we're going to duplicate this, bring it up, scale it on the Z, bring it down, scale it out a little bit, bring it down again. And we're going to do object apply scale. And then we're just going to add a few loop cuts in here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of scale some of these loop cuts in. Control R is uh, the shortcut, by the way. Sorry about that, guys. Should have mentioned that already. Kind of just messing around with this, trying to create like a cool looking shape. Now, once I have something that I think I like, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm just going to give this a nice little array modifier on the Z. Cool. And then you can kind of go from there. You can have it go one more time if you want. Just something like that. Really, really simple. And again, if you guys want to come back, you can adjust these as you go, which is really nice because then when you when you do adjust these, it's going to adjust everything else as well. All right. Kind of just creating something like out of the, off the top of my head. I have no idea like what this thing is or what it's going to look like. But this is our product so far in rendered view. It's looking pretty cool. Um, again, this this will probably need some work, but I do think this is looking pretty cool so far for kind of just throwing this together um, from scratch. I'm pretty happy kind of like what we came up with. Um, and I think we're ready to start hopefully just adding some materials, seeing kind of like what else we can add to this thing. Um, I think I might make one more adjustment. I'm going to add another cube, scale it on the Z, scale it down, bring it down here. Scale it down some more and then just kind of cut through the middle here with this. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and tab, control B, actually apply scale first, always. And then tab into edit mode, control B, bevel these just a little bit, tab out of edit mode, and let's go ahead and add that Boolean. Again, we're just kind of cutting in, cutting into this thing. Awesome. This is looking really cool. Um, and again, I'm not really sure what that part would be, but I do think it looks nice and I, I'm, I'm kind of digging it. I don't know. This is pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and actually get into some like shading and stuff. Um, this thing will probably need to use some work. I, I don't love it. I really don't love it, but you know, you can always go ahead and add like a simple deform, add a, a taper on the Z, negative taper like that. That's one thing you could do. Again, modifiers are so powerful. All right, let's go into rendered view. Let's go ahead and see what everything is looking like right now. So as you guys can see, there's really not like too much going on. I think I'd like these buttons to be some kind of like orange shader just to start with. Um, so I'm just gonna give those like a nice orange color and then we're gonna come back to that. Um, this blue, this button I think will do like some kind of a darker black gray shader. Um, kind of just outlining the basics of it right now. This entire thing, the actual object itself I think I'm gonna have that be some kind of a, a gray, maybe like a, a rough material. And then these buttons right here probably also make those orange as well. So this is like the basic outline for what I think I want for this thing. Um, and then I think I'll add like some, some minor details to everything. Now this right here, all these pieces, I'm gonna shift click all of them. And I'm gonna select this, control L, and I'm gonna link those materials. And this is already starting to look like really, really cool, especially if we go ahead and add our plane back in. This is this is like definitely like actually a product. This is really interesting. Um, let's go ahead and actually get some materials. So shout out to Ducky 3D for the materials I'm about to show you guys. Um, I actually bought these materials. This is a whole library of materials that I bought. And they're really nice for stuff like this. This is a bumped metal. I think I'm going to grab that. Um, there should be some metal materials in here and things like that. I really like this tech metal. So I'm going to grab that as well. Should be a rubber. That's that one. Um, and then let's see if there's any plastics. I think he had some plastics in here. What's cool is he also has these, which are kind of like some scratched look uh, to these plastics. Let's see what he has. 
just kind of scrolling through here. This one's these ones are all really really cool. Yeah, he has a lot available in here. A lot of great things to work with. I'm going to probably copy everything I have so far. Let's see if I'm missing any. All right, let's copy what we have so far and go back. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and paste these into like an entirely new collection. And I'm going to hide them. And now we can reference them. So if I click on my uh, my main product here and I go to my materials, I can do bumped metal. And as you guys can see, if I zoom in, you can see this nice textured material. And I really do like that. So I think I might go with that for now. And then I'm going to click on this material. Um, actually, I'm going to I'm going to click on this these buttons, and I'm going to try that chipped paint. See what that looks like. That's kind of neat. Chipped paint, damaged paint. Damaged paint is pretty cool. Actually, kind of like damaged paint. I think I might go with that. And I'm going to apply that here as well. As you can see, there's like some some scratches and, and dings and dents in there. And I just think it adds kind of adds to the actual product itself. Um, and then for the rubber, I think this will make this rubber. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Just a nice rough material. That looks pretty good. And then for the color, you can make that a little bit lighter. You can kind of see the difference now. That looks kind of nice. Actually, don't mind what it had before. All right, we're going to go ahead and highlight these as well. And we're going to copy that material. Cool. Now, for this actual bumped metal, we can change the actual color. So I can make it like a blue, like a lighter blue. We can make it pretty much anything we want. I kind of like the idea of making it like a blue. And then what's great What's great is we can actually adjust the roughness levels right here as well. So this, is, this material is really, really just easy to work with. That's awesome. Detail scale, we can adjust that as well. But I think that looks pretty nice. And just like that, we kind of have this like random product that like never existed. Um, now what I would like to experiment with too is kind of messing around with some more materials. So like this object right here, I think I would rather have that maybe be that chipped paint potentially. That looks kind of cool. And this is where you can kind of get into like the real details. Like this part up here, we might actually have that just be like a nice metallic shader with like a low roughness, right? And this is kind of where you get to get into like the actual details of the product and figure out what you want to do here. Um, I also think we could actually put a carabiner through here or maybe even some rope. Um, and I think I want to put a screen on this thing, right? So I might actually add that in as well. At this point, we can really add whatever we want. Um, again, it's just all like some simple modeling with the bull tool and things like that, just to kind of make this thing look really awesome. And I'm just really excited like with what we have so far. Um, and I'm excited to just keep adding to this. There's a lot we can do here, a lot of awesome things. Um, I mean, what do you guys think so far? I, I just think this looks so cool. Now, if we snap to our camera view and click on our actual uh, floor plane, we can also just give that a nice metallic material. We can lower that roughness a little bit, give that, that that nice glossy look. That just looks awesome. Now, normally what I'll do with something like this is I'll actually parent everything to an empty so that I can easily rotate it um, along any axis and change exactly where it's sitting. But I just think this looks so cool. I'm really, really happy with this so far. I almost want to take this, guys. Let's go back into solid view real quick. I want to take this, duplicate it, bring it up, rotate it on the Y. Oops. R, Y, negative 90, cool. And then I wanna actually put it like right here. And I think I wanna just scale it in. And what's cool is we can now take this and we can just do pretty much anything we want with it. Like we could have this, have uh, like an array modifier here. Oops. There we go. I'm just showing you guys kind of like an example of something you can do. You don't have to do this, but again, it's kind of just fun to mess with these objects, like repeat them on certain angles. This one, we probably wouldn't even have that many up there, but just like another thing you can do. It's really, really easy and fun and simple. Um, or you could make these like a different material, like you could make this your chipped paint material, for example. It kind of defines like 
what that functionality will be. Again, there's really no groove here, but I love the texture we're getting on this. All right, so here's one thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to solid view, and I'm actually gonna add in a torus, um, and then I'm going to rotate it on the X, scale it in, bring it up, bring it like alongside one of these, scale it in, cool. And I'm gonna bring it out on the Y, All right, so we have this right here, right? And what I would like to do is shade it smooth. And I think what I wanna do is also give it a subdiv. And I wanna make it this chipped paint material. And I wanna give it an array. Also, I wanna apply the scale. I wanna give it an array along this edge right here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And then we just have to adjust the spacing there a little bit. You can kind of match up nicely. That looks good. Um, and I'm also going to scale it on the Y. Make it kind of thin. Cool. And I'm gonna give it a mirror modifier. It's gonna go ahead and flip to the Y axis. We're gonna use this. There we go, now it's on both sides. And just a little something to kind of add like a little bit more detail there. Um, I just think that looks kind of nice. Yeah, it looks cool. Again, you guys can like do pretty much whatever you want. Um, anything is possible. I'm kind of just messing around here, just making something that I think looks really cool. Um, but it's kind of fun to just design something from scratch with just the primitives um, and the bull tool. I just think this looks really, really, really fun. Um, if we wanted to add like a little screen here, we totally could. I think what I'll do is I'll add a mesh plane. I'm gonna rotate it on the X. I'm gonna bring it out on the Y. Perfect, scale it on the X. Here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just scale this roughly to the shape of, of our screen here. Now, what this is gonna do is this is gonna act as our screen. Object, apply, scale. Now let's go ahead and just take a look at this. So this is our screen, right? What I would like to do is actually just make an emission shader with a grid. So I'm gonna hop over to the shading tab. We're in our material preview here. I'm gonna go ahead to a new shader. All right, and I'm gonna click on add nodes and I'm gonna add a brick texture. Plug that into our color there. Turn our offset to zero, scale it up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and give our width 0.3 and 0.3. And I am going to adjust our mortar size as well. Perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and make both of those colors white. All right, and then let's go ahead and check, make sure that object apply scale. Just add some mapping here. All right, let's plug everything in as follows. Generate it to the vector and the vector to the vector. Cool, awesome. All right, there we go. Now it's more uniform. All right, so you can plug the object in there. I'm just gonna adjust the scale here. Now, instead of plugging this into a principle, I think I'm gonna do an emission. And I'm gonna go ahead and swap that color out there. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like real quick. Now, if you raise this emission up to like 10, you'll see this thing is really, really vibrant. So I think I'm gonna turn it down to like five. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mess with the scale until I find something I really like. I think that looks cool. Um, now, I think on all of the classic um, like sonar, vision ones i'm just gonna go ahead and look up a reference for that real quick i'm gonna type in sonar screen looks like we have green and kind of like a black so the actual lines would be green and then the background would be black so let's go ahead and just try to replicate that so as you guys can see i'm gonna go with like a darker green and then for this one, it'd be like a lighter green like that. So as you guys can see, that looks pretty cool. Um, I actually really like that a lot. Um, now, you don't have to go with this look, but I think this looks cool. I'm actually going to make this a mix shader and just kind of see what we can come up with here. I'm going to type in glass, and then I'm going to type in mix shader. And plug everything in as follows. This is already looking really, really good. Um, and then we can adjust our IOR. That looks pretty pretty good right there. And again, this is just kind of like a fun little shader that I just kind of came up with, but it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, 
yeah, I, I kind of like this actually. Let's go ahead and snap to view. It looks good. Um, if you guys really wanted this to pop more, you could just adjust your emission strength to like 10. And you can kind of see that's like really popping now. This looks really, really cool. I almost want to experiment with these being this color. Yeah, I kind of like that. It looks good. There's just really so many things we can do with this. This is just me kind of messing around, guys. Just having fun. Showing you guys like different techniques that you can use. Um, again, you don't have to use these techniques. This is just what I think looks cool. It looks fun. I'm going to delete these off the top. I don't really like them at all. And then, of course, this hole, you can fill that with like a, a, some kind of ring, like those metal rings that you would have on a keychain attachment. You can do that. Um, you can add your own little imperfections to the surface. You can pretty much do anything, guys. And I just think this is looking really, really cool. I almost want to add a little level here on the bottom um, just for fun. Let's just do that really quickly. Let's go ahead and add a mesh cylinder. Rotate that on the Y. Scale it down. Bring it down here. Scale it in. Bring it on the X or scale it on the X there. And this is just going to be our level. We're just going to put like a bubble inside of this. Click on, uh, actually, you don't even need a bevel. Click on um, edge split and then subdiv shade smooth. Go to your rendered view. Now we have this nice cylinder down here. Let's just go ahead and give it a glass shader. And um, let me just look up a level reference real quick. Level. Uh, yeah, so it's green liquid with a, like a bubble inside. All right, cool. So I'm just going to give this like a slight kind of green look to it. That looks good. And I'm going to add in a mesh sphere. Bring that down. Scale it in. Bring it up. Snap to my camera view real quick. Scale that down some more. SX. Scale it down even more. That looks good. And then what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm actually going to, with this thing selected, I'm going to cut into my object. And as you guys can see, we now have our bubble. And then if you want to make this a less of a roughness, you can get a really clear picture of what that's going to look like. But don't forget to click on your cylinder or your, your uh, sphere, which is now hidden. I believe it is. Oh, where is that sphere at? The sphere is right here. Shade auto smooth. Oof, where is the sphere? Is it this one? Uh, sphere 001. Okay, we have to just find that real quick. There it is. Um, there we go. Shade auto smooth. Again, you guys just want to make sure everything is smoothed out. That level is looking really cool. Um, again, guys, this is really quick ways to just add like interesting um, objects into your scene here. And it doesn't look terrible. It looks kind of like a level. Um, if you really wanted to, you could probably add those little lines on there. I mean, honestly, you could probably do that with just a um, with a Taurus, right? With just a really small outer radius, something like really thin like that, right? And you just rotate it like so. Okay. Uh, negative. Actually, we'll just do 90. Bring it down. Scale it in. Again, I'm just kind of showing you guys like how you could do this if you wanted to. Perfect. Uh, just shade that smooth. And then let's just see what color that is. It looks like it's going to be black. Yeah, it's like a black kind of color. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that a new shader. Make it dark. And I'm going to give it an array modifier. First, I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to give it an array with just one. Perfect. Now you could do mirror. I think array is fine. And just like that, we have a level. Um, again, guys, this stuff is not that hard to do. You just have to think, how can I actually create this in 3D? How can we make this look like something that is kind of just fun. It looks like a product. It looks like something that's never existed, but you kind of like start to see the functionality as we go. Um, so it's just a lot of fun to just kind of create these these objects, create these things. I kind of want to experiment with the color just a little bit more, see what it could look like with maybe a slight turquoise color. 
crazy what happens when you just change the color, how dramatically different everything becomes. That looks cool. And I also kind of want to experiment with this background as well and make it a little bit darker. Kind of makes that, that product pop just a little bit more. And a final trick I'll show you is if you actually take the background and just like rotate it a little bit, you can kind of get some different effects here as well with the lighting. And again, this is just a really fun little product that I just came up with. I'm going to take my camera, kind of rotate it, bring it over on this angle here. I'm going to also zoom in to our product, 85 millimeter lens, bring it up, back the camera up a little bit, position it however we want. And this is starting to look really, really professional and really nice um, with kind of minimal effort, which is which is what I'm kind of going for here, guys, because I want to show you how quickly you can kind of come up with these really cool products that, yeah, the only thing I don't like is this. I just don't like this. I'm actually going to delete this and I think I'm going to add, let me, shift, let me move this up. I'm just going to add something here. Sorry guys, I wasn't really happy with that. And that's okay. You guys don't have to settle. Um, just apply the scale here. And I'm just gonna do a quick little array. And that's fine. Cool, just a little something extra there. Um, you kind of notice as you go, like what you like and what you don't like about the product and I just think this is like a really fun little product that we kind of came up with in basically no time at all and it was a lot of fun to just work on again if you guys really want to take it to the next level just keep working on the little details add as much as you possibly can this is just a fun thing that I came up with um, I'm actually gonna click on my screen here and I'm gonna just add a mirror modifier real quick and we're gonna switch the side there we go so now it's on the other side too cool Everything is looking fantastic. I'm very, very happy with this. I think it looks cool. It looks professional. Um, again, you can adjust your materials. Pretty much every aspect of this you can adjust. Love it. Love it. And you can zoom in. Check out these textures. You can make the textures a little bit less intense or more intense. Wow. And that, that is a procedural material. And that looks really, really nice. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear what you guys think of this, um, of this shader, um, of the product, just the process in general. Again, we're mainly only using everything within Blender. The only thing outside of Blender is the HDRI. Everything else is from scratch or an image reference. Um, and I just thought this was really, really fun to just kind of mess around with this. Um, I, I probably work on it a little bit more before I make the thumbnail for the YouTube video. But I thought you guys would really enjoy this process. So I just wanted to record it and show you kind of like a little bit of behind the scenes about how I work and the types of things that I do when I'm working in Blender. It's just kind of fun to record that process. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Um, again, I'm going to go to SolidView just to show you one last time. This was all created from scratch. You guys got to see the full tutorial, every single part of my process. Um, and hopefully this gives you some inspiration as to how you can design your own products or design a product for a client. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you guys might have and have a great day.